service grant us oh lord the reward of serving you faithfully in jesus name don't leave your people alone be with everyone and lord our prayers will serve you there will be fruit for the service in jesus name we thank you because we know you have answered in jesus name we pray god bless you you can sit down I welcome everyone to our Deeper Life Workers Training. We have been calling it a Workers Meeting, but I want to tell you, it's a forum for our training, and it's a place for our training. And so from now on, when you are coming, understand, you are coming for Workers Training. And it's a Deeper Life Workers Training. And I want to encourage our state overseers and region overseers and all our leaders and pastors everywhere uh, to really take this as a time of training. We're looking at 2 Timothy chapter 2. And I'm reading from verse 2. And the things that thou hast heard of me among many witnesses, the same commit thou to faithful men who shall be able to teach others also. Timothy was a good disciple. He was a good trainee. He was a good worker and minister. And here Paul, the apostle, wrote to him. And in this, the apostle is speaking to you and speaking to me by the Spirit of the Lord. The things that thou hast heard among many witnesses, that he has to come for this training, you're a brother, you're a sister, you're a leader, you're a pastor. Are you a leader in your area of work? All the things we're hearing, it says you will commit to faithful men. That means you will search for and you will find out those who are believers and they do not have the opportunity that you have. And then you pass the training on to them. You commit to faithful men who shall be able to teach others also that means for our state of overseers and uh, region of overseers already we know that there are some pastors and preachers from other churches that come to our tuesday meeting in the various states and regions and also to the vast permission for the workers training and it will be good you find those people they're in charge of churches of a hundred or five hundred or one thousand whatever all that we're learning you can either invite them or you can go to them yourself everything we have learned here and for those of us at the headquarters in lagos you've learned all these find somebody the person might be a member of the church maybe a member of, not be a member of the deeper life but is a child of God, is born again, and the Lord wants him to be fruitful to you and to work for the Lord. And so the things we're hearing, the things we're learning during the week, you'll find somebody. The person might be a man, might be a woman, might be of this church, might be of another church. But you find the man, and everything you have, you pour to them. What you learn are the Monday Bible study. What you learn on Thursday, what you learn on Sunday, understand that, internalize that, practicalize that, experience that, and then go find somebody. And then make them to learn, make them to know what you also know. You'll be fruitful in Jesus' name. I'm looking at James chapter 1. Reading from verse 26. If any man among you seem to be religious and brightless not his tongue but deceiveth his own heart this man's religion is vain we need to understand the word there it talks about religion it talks about this man's religion and then he talks about if any man among you seem to be religious now the problem of religion and the people who are religious there's so many around us but what is that what's this religion we're talking about 
the people that have the external expression of serving God of following Christ the external profession of wanting to please God but they do not have the inward experience of conversion inward experience of salvation and the evident um, the evidence of transformed life that's the people who are religious they seem to be religious they are passionate about religion and they have external ceremonies but it's religion without repentance and it is religion without regeneration and it is religion without righteousness you could say it this way these are the people that have a appearance of service but no salvation and they have activity but there is no conversion and they do not have the transformed life acts of the apostles chapter 26 acts of the apostles chapter 26 we're looking at verse 5 acts chapter 26 reading from verse 5 here it says which knew me from my youth this is which knew me from the beginning if they will testify that after the most straightest sect of our religion i lived a pharisee he said i was strict in religion it was a sect it was what i practiced religion yet he didn't know the lord in fact we're told in chapter 13 of acts acts of the apostles chapter 13 from verse 27 for they that dwell at jerusalem and their rulers because they knew him not you hear that they knew him not they didn't know christ as savior they didn't know christ as the redeemer they didn't know christ as the final sacrifice they didn't know the salvation in christ because they knew him not nor yet the voices of the prophets which are read every sabbath day that means these people went to their synagogue they went to their temple they went to their local assemblies every week every sabbath day and they read the prophets the writings of the prophets like isaiah and he read about christ there unto us a child is born unto us the son is given and the government shall be upon his shoulder they didn't understand they read about uh, about john the baptist make his way straight they didn't understand they read about jesus christ that he bore our grief and all our iniquity was laid upon him they didn't understand and yet they went to the synagogue and temple and worship place every sabbath day and it says yet nor yet the voices of the prophets which are read every sabbath day they have fulfilled them in condemning him galatians chapter one it's possible to have religion without righteousness have religion without regeneration have religion without redemption have religion without regeneration galatians chapter one verse 13 for ye have heard of my conversation in time past in the jews religion you see that this is religion and he said you're not strangers to my life and my manner of living you have heard of my conversation of life in the jews religion how that beyond measure i persecuted the church of god 
and wasted it. He didn't understand Christ, religious. He didn't understand the church, was religious. He didn't have the gospel, he was religious. He didn't have an inward, internal experience of knowing Christ. He was religious. And look at verse 14. And profited in the Jews' religion above many, my equals in my own nation, being more exceedingly zealous of the tradition of my fathers. What's religion? Zeal for tradition. Zeal for ceremonies zeal for whatever the elders have said zeal for orthodoxy yet without having real experience in the lord it's external performance without inward experience matthew chapter 23 matthew chapter 23 we're looking at verse 23 in Matthew chapter 23 verse 23 the Lord Jesus Christ was exposing the hypocrisy of religious Pharisees and he says warn to you scribes and Pharisees hypocrites for ye pay tithes of meat and anise and cumin and have omitted the weightier matters of the Lord. Judgment, mercy, and faith. These ought ye to have done, and not to have left, not to leave the other undone. You see, these people, they paid tithes. They paid their pastor's dues. They paid all that the synagogue or the temple had imposed on them to pay religiously. And yet, they didn't know the Lord. And there are people who rest in those external observances. And we need to let them know that all those external observances are not sufficient to create for them or to make way for them to get to heaven Luke chapter 18 Luke chapter 18 verse 9 and he spake this parable unto certain certain that trusted in themselves that they were righteous he said he gave this parable spoke this parable unto certain which trusted in themselves that they were righteous and despised others why did they think they were righteous they were equating religion with righteousness look at this two men went into the temple to pray the one a Pharisee and the other a publican. The Pharisee stood and prayed thus with himself, God, I thank thee. You can tell, you can see his attitude. He was religious and for him that was all. He was not saved but he thought religion was sufficient. He was not born again. He did not have Jesus as his savior. He did not have Jesus as his Lord. But he thought everything was all right. So he said, God, I thank thee that I am not as other men are. You see that? Comparing himself and saying, I'm not like other people. Those other people, they are infidels. Those other people, they are irreligious people. Those other people, they are not acceptable to God. I am not like them. And I'm not an extortioner. I'm not unjust. I'm not adulterer. And even as this publican, he says, God, look at what I do, religion. I fast twice in the week who will say i'm not pleasing the lord i never miss it two times a week and when you think about that in one year i fast more than 100 times in the year 
And then they will ask you, let me ask you, last year I fasted for more than 100 days. How about you? And then they feel superior and they feel that religion is the end of the road. I fast twice in the week. I give tithes of all that I possess. I never miss it. I pay my tithes. Look at this. This in verse 13. And the publican standing afar off would not lift up so much as his eyes unto heaven, but smote upon his breast, his chest, saying, God be merciful unto me a sinner i tell you here is christ as a savior he is the one who is going to judge us on the final day i tell you this man the publican went down to his house justified rather than the other for everyone that exalteth himself shall be abased and he that humbleth himself shall be exalted we're coming to james chapter one now that we understand a religion without righteousness we're coming to james chapter one verse 26 if any man among you seem to be religious and brightness not his tongue but deceiveth his own heart this man's religion is vain here he is telling us that if there's no salvation if there is no redemption if there is no repentance that religion by itself is vain what does that mean it's useless to himself and to others as you look at people who are religious sometimes if you don't know the scriptures you are tempted to almost envy them exalt them appreciate them that man will never give any reason for not going to church on sunday that man religiously that man seriously that man rigidly that man zealously will pay all the amounts the church imposes on them and yet it's useless to himself and to others his religion is vain this man's religion is vain what does that mean this man's religious activities are worthless in god's sight because the things that are appreciated by men exalted by men praised by men they're worthless in the sight of God. It means it's unprofitable in life. This man's religion is vain. It's unprofitable in life and he will discover it's unprofitable at death. When he comes to die, the truth will dawn on him that religion alone does not open the gates of heaven. He'll be surprised that with all the religion that he has practiced, is going to hell. This man's religion is vain. What does that mean? It's of no avail in eternity. Of no avail in eternity. Come back to James chapter 1, verse 26 if any man among you wait among you yes there are people who are born into the church into the christian faith and from early childhood they picked up the activities the singing the reading of the bible the good life the moral life and as they have gone on the doctrines they pick up all the doctrines but there was no day they went to the lord and say this hour this day i come to receive jesus 
as my personal savior I accept I realize I'm a sinner I realize that my religious activities and knowledge cannot save me Lord be my savior they've never done that and they are among us and it says if any man among you seem to be religious and will pick up all these external activities all these external performances without genuine salvation it says that man's religion is vain there are people that have come to our meetings and as they come they compare our meeting ways the meetings other meetings where they have been and they say i prefer this they study the bible they love the bible and i've been thinking of a place where i can know the bible and uh, no place like this have i discovered and they join us but even though they are among us they have never before they came and after they came they have never deliberately definitely given their life to the lord jesus christ turn away from sin and turn to christ and receive him as their personal savior if any man among you there are some of us uh, who are in the church by virtue of marriage the man so-called the brother said he saw the will of god to that woman from the village from her tribe from his tribe or from that other church and that eventually after all the processes they get married and the woman that got married to a member here is forced to be coming to the church and the husband now that they are married has never found out now my wife now we're married we scale through the interview at the marriage committee but now in reality i know you are religious sometimes you know you even almost put me to shame by your activity you're up and doing have you really before we married or after we're married have you given your life to the lord jesus christ in a very definite way and you can say at this time in this place i was convicted of my sin i went on my knees i pleaded for forgiveness redemption salvation i am born again my wife can you tell me or it's the wife asking the husband my husband can you tell me the definite time you had that breakthrough experience of salvation they cannot tell if anyone among you seem to be religious there are people who are referred to as workers Do you understand Many of us here yeah, we became workers in different, different, different ways. And there are some people who are workers, but if you confront them and you pin them down and say, tell me the day, the hour, the place, the moment when you are definitely born again, they cannot tell if they try to tell your story at such and such a time and then you pin them down so okay after that time what change came to you definite change definite transformation that not only you can talk about the people who knew you they will say this man is changed this woman is changed can you point to that they had see they are convicted they don't want to go that direction they want to they don't want to discuss about the time they were born again it gives them fear because they'll not be able to tell you something convincing that's why it says if any man among you seem to be religious and bright let not his tongue but deceiveth his own heart this man's religion this woman's religion 
this boy's decision or this girl's religion decision religion the same thing this person's religion is vain there are parents who will not want us to talk to their children directly there are parents who will not want us to bring their children under conviction they want their children to be happy in religion and if anybody confronts any of their children children of a pastor the children of a woman leader the children of those who are high in the service of the lord in our church if you confronted their children they're nervous they're nervous they can't talk to their children they cannot confront their children my child i know we lead quiet time i know we do this in the morning i know we pray in the family but is there a day you give your life to the lord in a definite experience they want to, us to do that and those young people themselves uh, the pastor mentions uh, you know boys and girls who are not born again you can see it's at that time you know the, the leaders make them agitate and make them to throw off the conviction and then to do something that you know becomes like the church becomes an entertaining ground but you have to face this that if any man if any person among you seem to be religious and bright let not his tongue you can tell there's no self-control you can tell the cross of calvary does not have an impact in their lives you can tell they talk they chase they whatever they do whatever there's no transformation of life out of the abundance of the heart the mouth speaks and their tongue betrays them that they are religious but not regenerated what are we to do we're here to be trained and we're here to have the sharp sides of an eagle spiritually and to spot out the people that need our help and the people that need the understanding of how useless religion is without salvation i want to do something about it that's what i'm talking to you today on alarm and concern for the religious alarm and concern for the religious sound the alarm blow the trumpet raise your voice bring those religious people under search under confrontation and under the proclamation of the true gospel alarm and concern for the religious i'm looking at joel chapter 2 in joel chapter 2 we're reading from verse 1 joel chapter 2 reading from verse 1 Joel 2 verse 1 blow the trumpet in Zion sound an alarm in my holy mountain let all the inhabitants of the land tremble for the day of the Lord comes for it is nice near at hand blow the trumpet verse 12 in verse 12 therefore also now says the lord turn ye even to me with all your heart and with fasting and with weeping and with mourning and rend your heart and not your garments eternal a real experience rend your hearts and not your garment we're looking at Isaiah chapter 58 Isaiah chapter 58 I'm reading from verse 1 Isaiah chapter 58 verse 1 cry aloud spare not lift up thy voice like a trumpet and show my people their transgression and the house of Jacob their sins 
It says, sound the alarm. Cry aloud. Why? Because of these people, they are transgression. They have not been forgiven. They have not been saved. Yet, verse 2, they seek me daily and delight to know my ways. As a nation that did righteousness, as like pretending like a nation that did righteousness and forsook not the ordinance of their God, they ask of me the ordinances of justice. They take the light in approaching God. The religious sound the alarm. The Christian worker has a great responsibility towards the religious. It is no ordinary task to wake up the sleepers among the dead. The religious people are sleeping. And they sleep among the dead. Wake them up. That's going to be tough. It is no ordinary task to convict those who equate religion with righteousness. And you're trying to tell them that except righteousness shall exceed the righteousness of the scribes and the Pharisees shall in no wise center into the kingdom of God. They can't understand that. With all their religion, with everything they're doing, you're telling them they still need something which they haven't got yet. It's not an task to open the blind eyes who delight in darkness. They delight in their darkness. They enjoy their darkness. They're ignorant and they appreciate that ignorance. And for you now to go there and open their eyes, that's not an early task. For you to pierce the hard hearts who hate to hear the truth about themselves. The natural man does not like to hear the truth about himself. And as you tell him, my friend, this one you're doing is not enough. Neighbor, this one you are committed to my church, my church, my church, my denomination, my religion. My friend, this is not enough. And they begin to tremble. They, they are thinking, I hope you are not going to tell me that a church is not good enough. It's difficult to pierce their hard hearts because they, hear, they hate to hear the truth about themselves. It's not an ordinary task for you to deliver captives who despise deliverance. Captives who enjoy and glory in their enslavement. It's not an ordinary task for you to arouse those who rest lying upon the top of a mast and they feel no danger they say i'm doing well even our priest says i'm doing well even our neighbors say that if they can have half of my seriousness and religion they'll be so happy and these people who rest and sleep and lie on the top of a mast who feel no danger for you to arouse them and for you to tell them danger is near it's a difficult task the people to warn those who feel secure under the shadow of the multitude of deceivers everybody presses them and they're under the shadow of those deceivers what a task we have to sound the alarm what a task we have to be concerned for the religious. What a task we have to have compassion upon them. Peril is near and they are at ease and at peace. Alarm and concern for the religious. Three things we're going to look at. Number one, his compassion for the religious without regeneration the religious without regeneration he is compassion for them christ's compassion for them number two the compulsion to rescue the religious rescue the perishing we think that's only talking about the thieves and about the uh, drunkards about the defiled about the adulterers about the fornicators 
well there are some people who are not fornicators nor adulterers there are people that have only one wife only one husband and yet they're religious but not saved the compulsion to rescue the religious number three the concern for the religious without righteousness the concern for the religious who are not righteous point number one is compassion for the religious without regeneration in Luke chapter 19 Luke chapter 19 we're reading from verse 41 and when he was come near he beheld the city and wept over it the city of religious people the city of people that will not sell on a sabbath day they will not buy on the sabbath day the religion the city of people that went to their synagogue religiously every week and they give their offering the city of the people that went to their prayer meeting every time and they will not miss it the, the city of people that were religious they beheld that city the people that thought this is enough they're going on their way to heaven he beheld them he pitied them so much he wept over it saying if thou art known even thou at least in this thy day the things would belong unto thy peace but now they're hid from thine eyes but now they're hid from thine eyes what did he say that they need to understand that they need conversion and yet jesus knew without that definite conversion they'll be forever lost in hell that's why he said in matthew chapter 18 verse 3 Matthew chapter 18 verse 3 and said verily I say unto you except ye be converted except ye be converted adult people except ye be converted mothers and fathers except ye be converted ties being religious people except ye be converted even those who say they are following Christ disciples except ye be converted and become as little children ye shall not enter into the kingdom of heaven my friend what's the use going to church reading the bible fasting every week being religious giving money to the beggars doing the best we can going to the mountain going to the valley and then be strict with ourselves having a copy of the bible having different kinds of bibles some people have five bibles at home and then they mark this and they mark that the quiet time every morning and yet and yet there's no conversion that's why jesus had compassion on them and as you look at yourself and you say can i say i'm born again which day which place what happened can i point to a particular day of my conversion if you cannot and see how religious you are and see the activities and see the up and down and jesus said except except ye be converted and become as little children totally innocent and free from the sins and traditions of society ye cannot and ye will not enter into the kingdom of heaven we're looking at luke chapter 13. in luke chapter 13 reading from verse 3 luke chapter 13 reading from verse 3 here jesus christ said pointedly pungently i tell you nay but except she repent ye shall all likewise perish 
these were people that came to jesus and he told him of some unfortunate people those people were not serving god those people were sinners and the tower fell on them and they died because they were not religious and jesus said you suppose that those galileans were seen as above all the other galileans because they suffered such things because of that accident i tell you nay except you yourself make it the report except you yourself rejoicing that other people died and it's because they're not religious but you are religious except you yourself for the page ye shall likewise perish do you tell the people you know that or have we come to exalt religion activities to the point that we do not think of repentance look at verse 5 it says in verse 5 i tell you nay except ye repent ye shall all likewise perish how can you say that laughing how can you say that jesting how can you say that making excuse well i'm just talking to everybody i don't mean you how can you say that don't qualify it except ye repent ye shall not likewise perish john chapter 3 reading from verse 3 this was a religious man no doubt a pharisee nicodemus and he believed in god he believed in miracles he believed in the teaching of christ in the head but instead of jesus allowing him to flatter the people that flatter they flatter the preacher they flatter the miracle worker they flatter the priests they flatter the church founders instead of jesus allowing the man to go on with his flattery jesus answered and said unto him verily verily i say unto thee unto thee religious nicodemus verily verily i say unto thee unto thee a ruler a leader a preacher among the jews except a man be born again he cannot see the kingdom of god if that is so the many people that join our church the many people that remain among the workers the many people that associate with us in the work and they can say that's my section and if you go astray and you intrude into that section trying to do something there they can pick up a fight they can get angry they can slap you they can go behind and walk against you they can make you stumble because you touch their religion their area of religious activity they'll defend each of the very life even if it gets them to hell we have them seal us like nicodemus and yet we need to tell them we tell them compassionately we tell them weeping we tell them concerned we tell them with real compassion sir except you're born again born of water and born of the spirit you cannot enter into the kingdom of god look at chapter 3 verse 5 of john jesus answered saying verily verily i say unto thee except a man be born of water and of the spirit except a man a religious man except a man a zealous man except a man a leading man except a man a person that appears has got it all but is not got 
the basic the foundation the first thing except a man be born of water and of the spirit he cannot enter into the kingdom of god religion is deceptive and deadening the religion of active service without actual salvation very dangerous active active but not saved the religion of committed hands without converted hearts there's no change in the heart but the religion external religion is there superficial religion is there it covers up a lot of things and the hands are active but the heart is not transformed the religion of busy life without the new birth busy life very busy is there is there even when the man is sick and even when everybody is saying my brother you can sit at home my sister you can sit at home because we understand your condition the man the woman loves that busy life although he doesn't have time to read the bible doesn't have time to pray doesn't have time to check up do i have the holiness without which no man shall see the lord he doesn't have time for that but he has time for the busy life without the spiritual life the religion of the running feet without redemptive forgiveness the forgiveness is not there he doesn't bother about that once in a while he feels the guilt of his sin and the guilt of the sin will be haunting him he cannot stop he cannot kneel he cannot pray he cannot repent he cannot say i will settle this sin once and for all so that i have redemptive forgiveness the kind of forgiveness that gives you redemption but his feet running all the time those are religious people the religion of sacrificial giving without sanctifying grace sacrificial giving they can give a anything even the money that is made for their food at home they say that need is there i just give i just give sacrificial giving but when it comes to time to get angry they're experts when it comes to time to fight they're experts when it comes to time to do evil they also do that but a sacrificial giving without sanctifying grace the religion of impelling helpfulness impelling helpfulness they are impelled they are driven into helping people they can help anytime anywhere they say that's what that's part of my commitment but as no indispensable holiness for the peace with all men and holiness without which no man shall see the lord all that they cannot abide by that that's in watch holiness that they do not have but they'll help you the religion of consecrated voice without christ-like virtue consecrated life consecrated hands consecrated feet consecrated voice he consecrates the voice to god i must be there on sunday i must be there for that meeting because if i'm not there you know i've told the lord i consecrate my voice to the lord how about christ-like virtue how about the tenderness how about the love how about the christian life how about the long suffering how about righteousness how about holiness religion deadly religion deadening religion deceptive religion 
dangerous the religion of sound doctrine without self-denial the doctrine is sound interview this fellow and ask him about this doctrine this doctrine that doctrine he'll get you through the bible but self-denial when the flesh is asking for sinful pleasure he cannot restrain himself from that when the world is asking for whatever he cannot refrain himself from that sound doctrine in the head but no self-denial in the life religion without regeneration that's why the lord is saying sound the alarm that's why the lord is saying have compassion on them and save them look at acts chapter 8 acts chapter 8 i'm reading from verse 27 acts chapter 8 verse 27 and he arose and went and behold a man of ethiopia a eunuch of great authority under candace queen of the ethiopians who had charge of all her treasure and had come to jerusalem for to worship that's religion i traveled all the way from ethiopia to jerusalem to worship and the man was a great man had a great position had a great authority to worship and was returning and sitting in his chariot and read Isaiah the prophet that's being religious he's gone to the camp meeting he's gone to the convention he's gone to the conference and he's coming back now and he's still reading the book of the prophets by himself he'll not while away time he'll not spend time on any other thing that's being religious then the spirit said unto philip go near and join thyself to this chariot and philip ran thither to him and heard him read the prophet Isaiah and said understandest thou what thou readest religious man i read the bible every time understandest thou what thou readest have you read to the point you discovered christ have you read to the point you discovered salvation have you read to the point you discovered the messiah understandest thou what thou readest have you read to the point to understand going to jerusalem coming back and going and coming back every year does not get you to heaven do you understand do you understand does your religion lead you into the light of the gospel and he said how can i understand except some man shall guide me how can i understand i've been doing this for years i'm religious but i don't understand except some man should guide me and he desired philip that he would come up and sit with him and the place of the scripture which he read was this he was led as a sheep to the slaughter and like a lamb dumb before his chair he so opened he not his mouth in his humiliation his judgment was taken away and who shall declare his generation for his life is taken from the earth and the eunuch answered a philip and said i pray thee i plead with you of whom speaketh the prophet this of himself or of some other man religious people it's not enough to read the bible you must understand it's not enough to understand it must drive you on your knees it's not enough to go on your knees you must be convicted of sin it's not enough to be convicted of sin you must be convinced that jesus is the savior it's not enough to be convinced you must confess that jesus is lord and savior it must get you to the point of salvation but without that the rest is religion and philip opened his mouth and began at the same scripture and tell me tell me out loud tell me out loud and preached unto him 
Jesus. Without that, the rest is religion. Point number two. Point number two, the compulsion to rescue the religious. The compulsion to rescue the religious. Isaiah chapter 58. Isaiah chapter 58, verses 1 and 2. Cry aloud. Spear not. Lift up thy voice like a trumpet. Show my people their transgression and the house of Jacob their sins. Yet, though they were sinners, yet, though they were transgressors, yet they seek me daily and delight to know my ways as a nation that did righteousness and forsook not the ordinance of their God they ask of me the ordinances of justice they take delight in approaching to God they take delight have you seen somebody looking at the time and running to church I promised my God I will never get their late. And then he looks at the time and he sees his running late. And then he picks the race, approaching unto God, delighting. Have you seen people when they get to church and you're singing a song that they know and they have learned that song from their childhood? You can tell how they hold that in book and they speak and they sing lustily and they sing with all their heart and you will see they enjoy the service but it could just be religion of the people that seek him daily of the people that delight to know my ways of the nation that did as if they wanted righteousness of the people that forsook not the ordinances of their God, of the people that are asking for the ways of justice, of the people that delight to approach unto God. Uh, look at this man we've been studying about uh, recently a uh, number of times. We're looking at Second Samuel chapter 21. Second Samuel chapter 21. And I'm reading from verse 1. Second Samuel chapter 21 verse 1. And there was a famine in the days of David. Three years. Year after year. And David inquired of the Lord. And the Lord answered him. It is for Saul. And for his bloody house. Because he slew the Gibeonites. Verse 2. And the king called the Gibeonites and said unto them, Now the Gibeonites were not of the children of Israel, but of the remnant of the Amorites. And the children of Israel had sworn unto them. And Saul sought to slay them. Tell me what follows. Tell me out loud. In his zeal, Saul, having zeal, Saul, being passionate for religion, Saul, being passionate and zealous for the purity of the nation of Israel. That's religion. Even though they are that religious, have compassion on them. Reach out to them. They need salvation. Second Kings chapter 10. In Second Kings chapter 10, I'm reading from verse 15. Second Kings chapter 10. We're reading from verse 15. And when he was departed thence, he lighted on Jehonadab, the son of Rechab coming to meet him and he saluted him and said unto him is thine heart right as mine heart is with thine heart and Jonadab answered it is if it be give me thine hand and he gave him his hand and he took him up to him into a chariot look at this and he said come with me and see my tell me 
and see my zeal for the Lord. So the medium right in his church. See my zeal for the Lord. Look at this man that had zeal. Verse 31. But Jehu took no heed to walk in the law of the Lord God of Israel with all his heart. For he departed not from the sins of Jeroboam which made Israel to sin. The man was zealous. That's religion. And then he invited other people, come and see how serious I am, how zealous I am, how passionate I am, and how I defend the religion of the nation. Come and see my zeal. And the man took no heed to walk in the law of the Lord. He never departed from the sins of Jeroboam who made Israel to sin. That's the reason why you want to have compassion on those religious people we're looking at mark chapter 6 mark chapter 6 verse 20 mark chapter 6 verse 20 in this uh, mark chapter 6 verse 20 look at what it says about the man for herod feared John Herod Herod feared John knowing he was a just man and unholy and observed him Herod observed John and when he heard him when Herod heard John he did tell me tell me out loud many things and heard him how gladly as long as John spoke about religion, does God accept? We need to serve God, I accept. It will be wonderful to follow after God, I accept. And wonderful to donate in building a temple for God, I accept. It, this is good, this is good, that is good. And it says, when he heard him, he heard him gladly. And he did many things, activities. But look at verse 17. For Herod himself had sent forth and laid hold upon John and bound him in prison for Herodias' sake, his brother's Philip's wife. For he had married he, her. For John had said unto Herod, It is not lawful for thee to have thy brother's wife. As long as John spoke about other things, it was interesting. As John, as long as John spoke on religion, on activities and this and that, that was all right. Until he pinpointed a sin and said, Herod, You've been hearing me gladly. And every time I come, you rejoice and you welcome me. And there are many things I've told you. There are many things you've done. There's one thing I've not told you. There's one thing I need to tell you now. So that you'll be right with God. It's not lawful for you to have your brother's wife. Therefore, Herodias had a quarrel against him and would have killed him. But she could not. But eventually, he was killed. You see, those are, those are religious people. That's why the Lord is saying, sound the alarm. Let them know. Pity the religious. Weep over them in prayer. Call them to repentance. Be earnest. Burst their bubbles. Pierce their defense. Convict the self-righteous. Persevere. Pursue, penetrate their shield, break their conscience. Don't give up. Bring the religious sinner to seek and to experience salvation in Christ. Don't entertain the religious. Don't praise the religious. Don't say, I appreciate your religion. I appreciate that you are very serious in religion. Don't entertain the religious at the gate of hell. Rescue the religious perishing son, the religious perishing daughter, the religious perishing mom, the religious perishing dad. Snatch them from the strong hands of self-deception. Sound the alarm. Cry out aloud. Tell them, 
except thou repent you'll likewise perish point number three the concern for the religious without righteousness the concern for the religious without righteousness in Romans chapter 10 Romans chapter 10 I'm reading from verse 1 brethren my heart's desire and prayer to God for Israel is that they might be saved my concern my passion my desire my prayer for Israel is that they might be saved for I bear them record that they have a zeal of God but not according to knowledge for they being ignorant of God's righteousness and going about to establish their own righteousness have not submitted themselves to the righteousness of God I'm concerned for them second Timothy chapter 3 verse 7 second Timothy chapter 3 verse 7 second Timothy 3 7 ever learning and never able to come to the knowledge of the truth ever learning these are religious people and they take delight in learning and they mark their bibles and they get everything stopped in their head but they're never able to come to the truth of the fact that except you are born again you will perish you will not enter the kingdom of god and they will not take time apart and say today I must settle this once and for all. Today, I must seek the face of the Lord. I must allow him to take away my sin. I must look up to the Lamb of God that taketh away the sin of the world. He must take my sin away. They are ever learning and yet never able to come to the knowledge of the truth now as Janus and Jambres was stood Moses so do these also resist the truth men of corrupt minds reprobate concerning the faith they deceived Isaiah chapter 44 tells us how deceived they are Isaiah chapter 44 Reading from verse 20, he feedeth on ashes. He feedeth on ashes. What does that mean? Look up here. Those days, they used to cook their food in the earthen um, pot. And they would put firewood under the pot to cook the food inside. And the Lord is saying, you know what you're doing? Open that pot. Take the food out of the pot and feed. That will nourish you. But instead of feeding on the food inside the pot, they were feeding on the ashes of the coal that cooked the food that's how bad it was he's saying the people who are religious but they are not regenerated the people who are very active and then they run here they run there but they are not born again they feed on the ashes that thing is not nutritious they will not take the manna and the food the gospel the good news the manna from heaven that will lead them to life in christ look at this in verse 20 it says he feedeth on ashes he deceived heart has turned him aside he has brainwashed himself he has deceived himself i'm all right without salvation I'm alright without regeneration. 
I'm all right without the Lamb of God that taketh away the sin of the world. I'm all right in Christianity. I'm all right in activity without the real experience of knowing the Lord. A deceived heart has turned him aside that he cannot deliver his soul nor save. Is there not a lie in my right hand? And sometimes so deceives people it's what they think they're able to do by their fasting and praying. Look at this, Matthew chapter 7. In Matthew chapter 7, verse 19, every tree that bringeth forth not good fruit is seen down and cast into the fire. Wherefore, by their fruits ye shall know them. Not everyone that says unto me, Lord, Lord, shall enter into the kingdom of heaven. But he that doeth the will of my Father which is in heaven, many will say to me in that day. There are many people now that are establishing ministries. Once they can pray for sicknesses to be healed, demons to be cast out miracles to happen did you not look at their foundation the foundation of repentance the foundation of righteousness the foundation of regeneration they do not have the witness of the holy spirit within them that they are standing on solid ground to get to heaven but they fast they pray they cast out devils. They carry out deliverance ministry. Here they are. Many will say to me in that day, Lord, Lord, have we not prophesied in thy name? And in thy name I've cast out devils. And in thy name I've done many wonderful works. Then will I profess unto them. Tell me. Tell me out loud. What's the difference between I know you not and I never knew you? I never knew you. What's the difference? I know you not means I don't know you now. I never knew you means what? I've never seen you in the kingdom. I cast out devils. I've never known you to be a born again person. I never never knew you you see when you run to these people they cast out devils they chase devils they heal the sick and all that but they'll never talk about being born again they'll never talk about repentance they'll never talk about holiness without which no man shall save the lord they'll never talk about they can talk about the blood of jesus that will that will kind of heal you the blood of jesus that will overcome the devil the blood of jesus that will wipe away the curse they never talk about the blood of jesus that will make you holy make you righteous no that's not their area they don't know about that and jesus said they will come and say did you go prophesy in your name look up here what's the use of fasting disciplining yourself praying and praying dedicating yourself to heal the sick cast out devils and then eventually when you die you go to hell what's the use why don't you stop and think about it well they will not leave me alone they come to knock at my door 4 a.m in the morning they say that we know that you can pray and you can fight the battle of our lives with prayer even when you are thinking of your life and you are saying this one i'm doing when i get to heaven this one i'm doing where am i going to end it they won't allow you to think about your life while you are thinking you're saying i'm going to stop this now i want to settle this matter once and for all and be sure i am born again somebody comes to you and he says come 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 there's somebody dying over there we need to go and pray now and then you put on your jacket you are off there you never have time to think about yourself 
sometimes you know you're guilty of immorality you're guilty of whatever all those sins you have committed inside you you know that this is terrible oh god i hope i don't die this time oh oh god i hope i don't die until i settle this you have not settled but they are coming to trouble you hey, come and pray for this one come and pray for this one come and pray for this one and while you are running about what if you drop dead the people who have died of heart attack the people who have died of accidents the people who have died suddenly without preparation why don't you stop and say this religion that is killing me i'm not going to go to hell i don't want to hear the voice on the final day i never knew you think and repent and go to the lord and say lord I want to meet you on the final day i don't want just religion religion to kill me many will say to me in that day lord lord have we not prophesied in thy name and in thy name i've cast out devils and in thy name i've done many wonderful works then will i profess unto them i never knew you depart from me ye that work in equity matthew chapter 23 in matthew chapter 23 verse 28 in verse 28 even so ye also outwardly appear righteous unto men that's religion outwardly appear righteous unto men but within ye are full of hypocrisy and iniquity verse 33 ye serpents ye generation of vipers how can you escape the damnation of hell the lord is uh, speaking to us that as we get trained we go to people have compassion on them have pity on them but make sure that you yourself you are all right hearts are hardened gradually the concrete is set slowly the conscience becomes seared as days go by the religious waxes worse and worse as moments fly and later it becomes unreachable and to concern arise and speak for christ pray for them preach to them prevail over them stop playing people are dying stop entertaining people while you are playing while you are jesting while you are watching lives are being wasted and souls are getting lost and the religious are dying and going to hell awake arise agonize arrest them for christ before they go to hell look for somebody somebody in your neighborhood somebody in your family somebody around you there that appears religious somebody among us somebody outside us that appears religious but you cannot tell this born again grab them hold them lead them to christ and don't let go until they know praise the lord now i am born again before we pray i'm going to ask you what day what month what year were you born again can you be definite and say i know it was this particular day of this particular month of this particular year a definite instantaneous experience of salvation i was saved and since that time if you backslid can you tell me of the day and the hour can you tell me of the months and the year yes you backslid i was restored it was like the day i gave my life to christ and i'm definite and the spirit of god is bearing witness in my heart if i died today i will get to heaven or is it like 
I'm a member of deeper life now. I'm a worker in deeper life. I'm a preacher in deeper life now. Let's go beyond religion. Let's make sure that Christ has come into our hearts and he lives in our hearts. God give you understanding. Let's rise up and talk to the Lord in prayer and make this day a definite day, a definite time to say, Lord, I heard, I'm not going to throw this one away. This is definitely for you. Rise up and talk to the Lord and say, Lord, here am I. Religion without regeneration will not accomplish anything in the sight of the Lord. Call upon the Lord. And if you are sure you are saved, you are sure you are born again, you have the definite experience, look for the people who are religious but not righteous, reach out to them before they perish, before they die, before they go to hell. Reach out to somebody, touch their lives, turn them to the Lord.